Why We Bleep is sponsored by Signal Sounds. Ladies and gentlemen, are you plagued by the curse of money? I was once, until I discovered a way to get rid of it. I discovered one of the retail world's most efficient money disposal systems. It's called Signal Sounds. By simply cultivating an interest in Eurorack modular synthesis, studio equipment and Tonex caramels, Signal Sounds were able to take the money that was making me patently miserable and convert it efficiently into equipment that made me very happy. Signal Sounds advised me to purchase equipment from the ADAC company, who they've recently started carrying. I was starting to feel really miserable at one point. But Jason and co. perked me up by suggesting I purchase the mad landscaped human-controlled tape transport that they do, and holy Jesus Christing on a bicycle. I'm full of joy now. I think the next thing that's going to make me a little bit happier is the tip-top Z5000 multi-effects. I heard Mylar Melody's just got one of those, and he said it sounded ace. And for my newfound burgeoning studio, I'm going to buy some of those Loki stands. Oh yes, that's the super clever affordable snap-together equipment stands which make the invention of sliced bread look positively pedestrian. Only problem is, they're so dang affordable. I'm going to have loads of money left over if I buy some of those. So for all your sadness to joy conversion needs, simply visit the website of Signalsounds.com. You'll find them on the internet at Signalsounds.com. Hi, chum. Welcome to Why We Bleep. If this is your first time, pull up a pew. You're very welcome, and I've been waiting for you for a number of months. That's why I waited a little while to release this podcast. I know it does say monthly on the ticket, but I'm so busy. You know, sometimes I just don't have time to release an episode. Um, but yeah, I actually have been <laughs> insanely busy. But I am doing my best, and I'm hoping to make good on making you wait by releasing another one in relatively short succession. I have a few up my sleeve. Watch this space. So if you enjoy today's chat, subscribe, why don't you? Tell your friends, why won't you? Let the world know that this podcast is just one of the greatest things on earth. It's up to you. I'm not wanting to put words in your mouth. I'm just going to say that. And yes, conversations we have today with Ian Williams from the band Battles. Um, yeah, pretty cool dude and a pretty cool band battles if you don't know them are the singularly battles band there is no other band like battles who very recently have put out a brand new album called juice be crypts juice be crypts juice be crypts which is uh, juice as in liquid b the letter b and crypts the place underground where you put bodies and it's crackers like I said before, there's no other band like Battles. They're a kind of... I don't know if they hate this term, so if you're listening and I, you hate it, I apologise. But I would describe Battles as kind of a math rock band, in the sense that they are a band, they use guitars, they use interesting time signatures, um, but I would also describe them as a, an electronic band. They skirt both of those worlds. They're easily a band, and they're easily an electronic band. And we talk about this in Ian's inimitable way. Firstly, though, I want to plug something, which is a friend of mine, who you may know, called the Div Kid, who's another modular YouTuber person, has released his second module. Not content with entirely taking over the world with his 4HP mutes module, his new module is an eight output LFO called Oct. It's got a little like slicey thing through the O, so maybe it's Oct if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And it's an eight output LFO module in only 4HP. And by turning just one dial, you just get all of these interesting, unrelated LFOs at different rates. So you could plug all eight outputs into eight different things and just squig the dial and all your little things will start responding at different rates. You don't sort of determine what any one particular output is. You just turn the dial and stuff happens. 
And I'm a really big fan of modules where you turn the dial and stuff happens. You just kind of squiggle something and something interesting occurs. I think it's the kind of thing that Ian Williams from the band Bowels would be totally into. Don't want to put words into your mouth, Ian. Um, but he is into modular and we do talk about that stuff. And I mentioned DivKid as well because there's something that, that Ben triggered for me. Triggered? Not like that. He mentioned a talk by Tom Erb. Tom is the man behind Soundhack plugins. And maybe more recently, you'd know him as the person behind some of the most interesting digital make noise things, including the Soundhack Morphogene, which I'm pretty sure that we mentioned. I'm fairly sure that Ian has one of those. And for me, particularly the ones that I've rinsed the hardest is his reverb, the herb verb, which is a work of art. It is just the most interesting mad digital reverb where you can just with seven dials and no modes just push the thing around into different spaces it can do stuff like you know beautiful lush classic kind of synthy reverb but it also can do like hell drones where it makes tones by itself it like sounds like a cello and stuff like this it's, it's reverb it's really really crackers and so Ben mentioned there was this talk that Tom did that was filmed and chucked up on, on a sort of university website, but he could no longer find it. And in long story short, I found it. But ironically, it had really reverby sound, like it was kind of filmed ad hoc uh, with a camera at the back and with, a, you know, a radio mic and the radio mic is panned hard left and the camera mic is panned hard right. And it's kind of like semi-watchable, but really unwatchable if you're at all bothered about sound quality. And so I downloaded it and then tarted it up. I denoised it and I de-reverbed it and I, I made it watchable, basically, and have re-uploaded it with the kind permission of the University of Santa Barbara. Um, and so you can watch Tom's talk. And the talk, by the way, again, is about the herb verb, but is also just about how reverbs are made algorithmically, like how you design reverbs, which is a real dark art and a fascinating subject because algorithmic reverbs aren't real spaces. They exhibit properties similar to the properties of real spaces, but they are not real spaces. And so I find that interesting. It's sort of what we pass as real, an illusion of real that we accept as real. And then, you know, the parameters that you are given to mess around with reverb, you inevitably end up pushing those and twisting them and doing odd things with them. And, and the verb is a good example of a reverb that's based in the sort of classic design world of algorithmic reverbs, but is allowed to be pushed to extremes that you might not necessarily think a reverb is capable of. And so there's a whole talk and it's on my channel. Go and watch it if you are interested in the whole algorithmic reverb thing. And if you look in the description, I'd link to a few other things. I want to shout out one other thing, which is there's a Valhalla reverb talk from Sean Costello of Valhalla Reverbs. He is an absolute don. And his passion for reverbs kind of inspired my own. <laughs> I was like, well, I love his reverbs. I love how they sound. But I mean, hearing him talk about reverb design made me want to know more about reverb design. You know, it's his love and his love is infectious. Bless you, Sean. And while I mentioned Tom Herb, there is another Soundhack co-developed product that I've been messing around with recently called the Mimeophone. I counted that I have released in the region of three hours of live music in the last month, um, including three completely independent videos about my live system, i.e. me just jazzing around on my live system, but which now features the Mimeophone as its primary kind of major effect. And actually, I really want to try and shoehorn the herb verb back in because I think Mimeophone and herb verb are basically your absolute most murderously bang up perfect delay and reverbs for live use and so i've been totally enjoying smashing the mimeophone and if you would like to hear the mimeophone be smashed please go and listen to some of that music <laughs> despite the comments from people who say uh, mr Mylar melodies i love your music but you have a sort of almost you know pathological ability to listen to one vocal sample be looped over and over and over again uh, the same is because I use the radio music and I send repeating little like gates into it to repeat and repeat and repeat the same little phrase and use it as a kind of texture over and over and over. 
And I think it's, I'm just slightly sort of like, you know, mortified when you read a comment like that because you're like, oh God, there's something absolutely wrong with my music and I'm an idiot that I don't hear what everyone else is hearing. But uh, a number of people have said this and a number of other people haven't commented on it. And I think it just comes down to something that I think will segue us neatly onto the conversation with Ian, which is that there is something that Ian says. He says that I, I just have a preternaturally incredible ability to tolerate listening to the same little squiggly slip of music for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours on end. And I think myself and Ian Williams from Battles, if we share anything, we share that one common thing. Um, He loves listening to a loop. A man, I like listening to a loop as well. I have a, a sort of almost suicidal ability to just listen to a loop over and over and over again. You know, I could quote Brian Eno at you and say how he comments that repetition, even though you're hearing the same thing twice, it is never the same thing the second and third and fourth and fifth time you hear it. But I'm just going to say, deal with it. <laughs> and so, yes. From one looper to another, Ian Williams. And in this conversation, which was conducted in the Brudenell Social Club in Leeds, North England, just before they played a show a couple of months back, and we chatted about live music and modulars and kind of whatever seemed appropriate, his head is in many places at the same time, you know. And if you listen to Battle's music, you can kind of hear that. The man is just he is thinking about a lot of the things all the time and thinking about things in many different ways. Um, So he's one of those fascinating people. You can kind of just wind him up and let him go and he'll just take you to different places. And so I just let that happen um, quite honestly and enjoyed our brief um, time together. This is probably one of the shortest conversations that I've had on this podcast coming in at sprightly 33 minutes. Mate, so sprightly. But interesting and fascinating, with hints of all manner of interesting things to learn more about and explore. He really is a singular person, and it really is a singular band. I think they're interesting as hell. I love what they do, so I was really pleased I got to meet him. And they also played an absolutely fucking murderous show afterwards. So if you get the opportunity to see battles, do it. And, and of course, buy the album, Juice Be Crypts. It is out now. Okay, no more adoing. Ian Williams from the band Battles. Cheers. I want to talk about live music, especially like my. My personal background of doing like that modular thing and playing modular has been doing live shows with a modular synth where nothing is pre-prepared so that there's right. totally, utterly the element of risk and danger. Yeah. Um, and it's like, obviously, you're, you're not really doing that in your shows. Like you are pre, you know, you have a plan, but it, clearly there is like a major element of risk. What does like a live show like actually need to be? Like, what should it be? Right. What yeah. do you actually want to see when you see a show? It's tricky. Yeah, I I kind of go through like a lot of these philosoph- philosophical questions that I conversations that I mostly have with myself uh, about how do you play a sequencer? Yeah, the effect of a machine playing a pattern of notes is different than a, a person playing a pattern mm. of notes. It's cool. It, it sounds like machines do things that people can't do. And it, and it and you know if you like electronic music, I think you you kind of like those those effects and and then so like so what is playing that? My new setup the and you know at this point we've only played five shows, yeah. so I had sort of really migrated over to uh, Ableton for the whole last record. I was only executing everything I did out of one computer. Just having everything in, inside of one box is just so much tidier mm-hmm. and. Basically, you know, I I kept running into the problem with the fact that a laptop's not that dependable on stage, mm. and that did you get like I, I could like- I just, yeah I could just never make it foolproof. You know, you could have like six shows in a row that were flawless, and like then the seventh show, 
something something stops it doesn't work and your computer does a hiccup and you know the problem is you have software laptop sound cards so there's like three separate realities the, the th three separate things that could all fail right yeah yeah and, yeah, yeah and it's so hard to hunt down like what you know where the problem's coming from and like you know which software update you need and everything and it it gets into just like man i'm you know th this is supposed to be music and i'm you know a, an it guy all of a sudden you know and it, it is sort of ridiculous so my breakthrough now and uh, knock on wood, everything's been pretty solid on stage so far, is that I've sort of shared the burden, the workload that Ableton had carried all by itself. And I have an Electron Octatrack now. Mm. I still have Ableton doing some stuff. And, and I went in a different direction. Like, I don't think, I don't know if too, too many um, electronic music people think of this thing, but it's the, it's called the Axe Effects. A-X-E-F-X. It's just sort of a more high-end competitor to like, you know, think of a, whatever, like a Sansamp thing yeah. or something like that. Like in a lot of like, you know, people who kind of nerd out about their guitar sound, like are, are totally into this thing. Which, you know, like that, growing up as more of a guitarist initially in my life, like I always kind of hated that sort of macho guitar culture. It Even though, you know, I kind of loved it at the same time. Mm. But I always sort of had this like, you know, like when people start talking about their guitar tone, I start yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tones suck. I just, whatever it is, like where. Yeah, I just, suck. I just naturally I'm just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. You know, I my, my I was happiest when I was just plugging my guitar straight into a bass head, and like there's zero sound except for just the strings going. <laughs> and I and I always kind of like that, but um, but this is uh, in a complete opposite direction. It's it's the axe effects, but it. So, so it, but no it's amp, basically you're not actually playing. Tonight. Yeah, I'm ampless totally, now. There's no amps totally, on stage now. Yeah, it's a closed loop like CCTV. And actually, it's 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 it was a little scary at first because we battles had always had this wall of amps behind us uh, yep. for all our records before, and uh, it's it's kind of awesome um, to have it, the amps. I like, think the front. I mean, the front from the front of house perspective, which you know, as a musician, you're not really experiencing it, but it's it's you know, I think that. You don't have these big old amps like shouting at the crowd anymore. So mm. like the you know all of a sudden like the every, like, everything you're doing is crystal clear coming through the PA system mm. as opposed to you know your bandmate. Who's like, but you could be way more like consistent. So you'd probably be louder if you have someone who knows your sound. Like they could easily make it sound better. Every yeah, day. yeah. And this thing, it's I mean, I'm I'm still perfecting it. So you know, I have my Octatrack. As a, as a looper. Yeah, but it, you know, theoretically you could have, you're able to doing this too, but you know, you, you know, you have, you're sending MIDI out, you, you can, you can change your Axe effects settings. You, so you, you can tweak like, you know, bass EQ up, bass EQ down, or what, what, it, it's got a ton of software plugins that work inside of it. And so then, so you can change your sound in sync with the song, right? So if you know, it's, mm. you can nerd, you can, you can get down to like, the measure, you'd be like this yeah, measure yeah. is this sound, this measure, and and I'm I do that a little bit right now, but I mean you can go a lot further with it, you know. Where it's like you know, the first two beats are like a bass sound, and then the next beat is a guitar sound, and then you know, you you can really nerd out with that stuff. And I was doing that with Ableton before, um, and I was he was just doing that with like um, you know whatever the uh, the rubber band the you, you know the uh, Mm. But you know, I was drawing. You, you draw like the the red line in the in the MIDI clip, and the, oh yeah, the, yeah, with the, automation. Yeah, the automate. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, change modes or whatever, yeah. yeah, the automation that sort of makes uh, you know your plugins move up mm. and down in sync with the music. You, you were doing that live, literally. You pre programming Well, I was pre programming. Where, where I was pre programming yeah, things. Changes. So, and that, I mean, that's an interesting question about live again. Like, what is mm. live? Like, is live real time moving your knobs? Or is live playing the music? Like, yeah. is playing the music, That's pressing I mean. middle C, ding, ding, ding. Like, hey, I played the keyboard. But, and so all of your sound tweaking is happening invisibly f with like a MIDI clip, mm. just firing off the automation commands. <sighs> you know, for for the stage, that's the, the approach I've taken in battles. Like, it's more performance mm. focused. Like, yeah, okay, I'm playing. It tells a story to the audience more if I think if a person's playing the keyboard as opposed to if a person is turning a knob. Um, hmm. 
So, so I focus as much as I can. I make it like playing the guitar, playing the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as which is maybe corny, but I don't know. You have a balance I, to strike to like. Yeah, I'm trying because you're okay, telling. Okay. You have to tell a. I feel like on stage as the musician, you're telling a story about the music with what you do. It's choreography that explains the song to some degree, especially when it's mysterious music, like on a technical level. Which like, definitely, like, it's like, which like our band often, you know, people will see us multiple times and be like, I don't even understand like how you're making that and what the sounds are. I'm yeah, hearing, like right? what actually makes that on the record and then they see a guitar, they're like, oh shit, that's a guitar. That yeah, all right. Those right. kinds of things. Yeah, the but it's like the Steve Reich thing where he's like, he talks about with his music, he structures songs in inverted commas, so that you can understand the process by which they were invented by having like one element, you know, like the it gonna rain, it gonna rain, it gonna rain, and then you hear the next one be introduced mm -hmm. rather than just starting with them both at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's allow you to actually right. sort of get stage by stage. I started with this, then I added that, then I added that, and now listen to what it sounds like. Yeah. You know, it's that I sort know. of because that's the only way that an audience will understand. Like especially with loopers, which I, yeah. you know, we've got Ed, and, and Ed Sheeran yeah, to thank we, for like making that more better known. But and, and that's another balance of striking because compositionally, you know, so Steve Reich's songs are long, yeah. right? To get across one one idea, and you know, so and so we call it minimalism. <laughs> but like, so you know, a battle song will, will compact a lot of ideas into a three and a half minute mm. song. So we'll, for better or for worse, a lot, a lot of times we'll start the loop with four layers in there already. Yeah, you know what I mean. We yeah, yeah. so. We, that but will do you edit do that it live, down. Though? Or do you like, I'm trying to remember, I saw you play at the Coronet like years ago for like years and years ago. Uh -huh. And I remember, I do remember sort of seeing, what was that? I'm trying to remember the tune. But there's a few where you structure them like that, where it's, you really see the loop being. Yeah, you have to build it up. Captured. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We used to just use uh, Echo Plexus on stage. Mm. And I mean, those, those are the main, main ones, which at most you could sync them via MIDI. Or they also had like sort of like an audio signal that could, mm. that could sync it. But that system, we had to build it all live from scratch. That was cool in, mm. in its own way. But yeah, for efficiency's sake, you know, I, I sort of figured out ways where you pre-program the capture of mm. notes and stuff. So you can have, you know, like with the electron, you can um, put recording trigs in the sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know ahead of time you're telling it to make the grab yeah. for the sound capture yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's obviously a bit of a dance between you and the machine then it's the, but that, yeah it's it's it, cool like it's it can, yeah it's yeah what are you literally a twosome now like you there are two of you on stage yeah there's two of us on stage yeah what do you yeah. what do you do and do you play your old songs or do you is it yeah we stuff? yeah right now we, we have a couple different. of old songs we're doing and we, we can do more it's just a matter of actually just investing the time to figure out how to play it yeah, but, yeah you know and obviously we have to sort of reinterpret it a bit um with just two of us but i mean that, that that's fun you can be creative with it and you know, cover your own song <laughs> yeah yeah and you know and reimagine it and do something fresh with it i don't know at this point yeah we're just starting in a lot of ways because we just came off of making a record we're mm. most sort of set up to play a lot of the songs on the new record yeah and then a couple of oldies so did you presumably you wrote that man, not not getting into the whole like band member leaving thing yeah it's not, it doesn't matter but it's like but out of curiosity did you write them with him and then reorchestrate them or did you are these just this one was started from scratch you just started, started like, the two of us started, this yeah. is the two of us yeah 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 it was not and that way you can actually design them to be played. It's like, to what extent do you play them live when you record? Or is it, do you, are you trying to, when you actually record them, are you literally doing them as you would do on stage? Or do you, do you accept like, uh, we'll, we'll take advantage of Pro Tools and we'll like do retakes of bits and bobs and assemble it, but know that you can never really create an arrangement that you couldn't perform live. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I never really thought of that, thought of it that way. I mean, just make the music. Yeah, we, we're just sort of making the music yeah. at this point. You know, the the new record, we worked with some guest vocalists too. Mm. And sent, you guys send the music out to people. And, and you literally, you write something and think this needs a vocal and like just chuck it out to them, to people you think it would work with, and then you just return it or do you get them in? How does that work? Well, no, I think, 
Well, it's funny. I you know I've made a lot of instrumental music in my life, and then there's just a fact: if you put a human voice on a thing, about four times as many people will pay attention to it. <laughs> and you know, I you know I, I'll admit, like I, I guess that's whatever kowtowing to the uh, commercial <laughs> pressures, but it's nice when people pay attention to the record you made mm. and don't go no thanks because I, I think a lot of people actually did that on the last record we made which was all instrumental it's mm. like yeah okay nothing here and you know like That's of course sad, hardcore like, hardcore fans fun. come out and yeah. like they'll d- dig anything you do of course but you know the the world the larger world is just like i don't get it goodbye and you know is that I, just because you're a, like quote unquote a band and they expect that because they wouldn't expect that of like a, what is well we're, we, we were always like a weird a weird band i think that's sort of we tried to have it both ways which was that you, you know we could sort of make crazy music and creative stuff that didn't give a damn about mm. the conventions of the music world but at the same time we, we made a few songs that were sort of accessible and that a, a larger audience reacted to and in sort of reaping the benefits of that and then you get more people to come to your shows and the world sort of pays attention to you for a second but i don't know it's a da- it's a dangerous uh, you know third rail because you could end up sucking i guess <laughs> what just going completely instrumental or like yeah was just yeah it was people. very easy it's yeah. very easy for us to just make instrumental jams all the time and it's cool i, I don't know we'll mm. keep doing it i don't know it feels like vocals are used in quite an instrumental way in like, well, from what I've heard in the sense, like the certain songs where it's especially like this titanium two-step is like, it feels like, like there is, there is a voice in it, but there's not lyrics per se. Are there lyrics? Right, right. It's, it's just, just he's going to do this yelpy kind of like, he, yeah, that guy Sal is from like, cause yeah. Liquid Liquid was this old school, early eighties, New York band, like, you know, that kind of almost no wave. You can almost hear like this sort of, David Byrne esque, yeah, kind of nonsense poetry, not quite melodic, but just talking and yeah. ranting kind of thing going on. And um, I really like it. I think it's, yeah, it's and it's like the non, it's sort of the non musical aspect of it is the cool part because like the music gets to be the music, and then mm. you know it's, it's this, this sort of emphatic kind of yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and even you know well yeah uh, yeah there's a John Anderson song. From you know the singer from Yes on the record, and he, you know, a, a you know very quote unquote good singer, and, mm. you know, so his thing is very melodic and harmonies and very, very nicely structured. But still, we mixed it into the music. It wasn't sitting on top. It was sort of bedded. I think we thought it as it sounded just better like inside the guitars yeah, yeah. and and not like lead singing as much. That's really interesting. I met, um, no name drop, I met Colin Newman from Wire who talked about production and it was just like some amazing stuff he said, which it feels similar in a way. Like he's like, everything should feel like a cohesive whole. Like it shouldn't feel like, like you should almost not be able to tell the parts apart. Do you know what I mean? Like they're all Mm -hmm. just, including vocals. Like it it all just munches down into this one unit that is the song, Um, which like, yeah, listen to his stuff. He definitely is that. And he has some like quite funky like rules with himself. Like he never does like pickups. He always just plays the song from start to finish right through. Never allows himself to just drop in and just re-record one little element. Oh, is that true? It's just like yeah. apparently so. Like yeah. just all yeah. straight through. Yeah, he's yeah. But that but it's that idea of everything feeling like a unified whole. Like and and that therefore means vocals don't necessarily take prominence. Like a sort of anti mix engineer. 101 isn't it to like vocals supposed to be front and center not like yeah an instrument yeah, like everything right. else yeah totally i think it's good i mean it's like yeah and you, your music is is incredible a very sort of it's why it's funny we're talking because it is a it's while it's a band i consider it like an electronic band although it's not i know it's not really not yeah i don't yeah i don't know right i know i still go through that too i'm like yeah, i'm in a band yeah aren't i yeah <laughs> And maybe it is the drums. Maybe if it was all drum machine, it would be. It wouldn't be the same. I mean, obviously, then it would not be. Yeah. John is John is just an absolute monster. He's so wonderful. I'm just like, yeah. It's such a wonderful thing. So yeah, I was going to ask you about the album. Like, there's that wonderful, wonderful video, that Novation one, where it, oh, not Novation, sorry, Ableton, where it talks about. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Like talking about the process of how 
you have written music, which I assume is exactly the same as a two piece. It's just that you're there's two of you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you get more autonomy. Sure. I'm sure, yeah. sure to like do yeah. things. Like I was going to ask, it would be interesting just to talk about the process and like how. What I was curious about is the kinds of stuff that you do when you're by yourself. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, what did you make that is then like stripped out and kind of or do you know what I mean? Like, you you if you're working in isolation, what sort of music do you make and how is it tempered by John? I suppose in this instance. And, yeah. And, well, I mean, this record, a lot of it. I mean, a lot of it was. I mean, I think probably everything started with like just me playing with different tools by myself. Yeah. And for a while too. I mean, it really was the course of a year of me kind of like just playing with things and tweaking sounds. And the interesting thing about how John comes into it is that he he in so many ways is the polar opposite of me in 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 many ways in life and music. And and so my my whole thing is like when I know that John bites at something is like, "Oh, I really like that." Then I know it's succeeded it's, it's it has a it's a little piece of music that has accomplished something bigger than because I I have a great patience for for the most nerdy noodling like something that could last for three hours yeah. and you know it could be a single drop of water or something and I'd be like mm. <laughs> and you know and most people would be like leaving you know the room yeah, yeah, yeah. but so sometimes I think I get caught up sort of a, like in, in a swirl of that and I, I lose sight of some bigger picture. Whereas like John, I know when John bites at a thing, it's sort of like transcended my little confused mm. mind and all of a sudden it's like this, and, and that that's always kind of helped it become a battles thing. It gave me, it would give me confidence that it sort of transcends it, or it translates into something mm. more more than so just like legs. like novelty about how yeah, yeah. my low pass gate is doing something you know like <laughs> so he he would sort of react to things and and help sort of think about uh you know what to build songs around mm. some things on mod- modular sense yeah. some, some things from um different uh samplers you know i i i have like kind of the the from a few years ago kind of like a lot of the make noise things, yeah, and uh, so probably got one. Yeah, I'm looking at your DNA. your t-shirt right now Just with the make noise. Phonogene, herb, herb. Yeah, I got the. Uh, well, I have the morphogene. Morphogene. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and I got the. Right. Uh, I have the Renee. And yes. The, the maths. And the uh, pressure points yeah, and you know a bunch chest. of those things. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I'm looking at your chest. That's fine. Like, That's yeah. fine. And uh, yeah, and then some of the Mo- the Moog stuff too. Yeah, well, um, the mother. Or... Well, the mother, and then also I have like just a, a Voyager, a Voyager. Nice, yeah, so yeah. Um, what do you make with what sort of stuff do you make with it? What does it? I don't even know. What just Doesn't sounds it just crazy noise? sounds. I you know I mean that's the cool thing. I mean, I mean, I I would not say I'm like a whiz at that stuff. Um, I did do a solo show where I used it on stage. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not even good enough at it to uh, really claim I pre-programmed anything. It was just, but I figured, but I thought it went went over pretty well. It was cool. Doing what? Like uh, you were playing over? The- yeah, I just yeah. did these sounds on the. Oh, I have a DPO mm. uh, that that uh, oscillator yeah, that yeah, yeah. always makes, and you know, so it's all. <laughs> but it was sounded pretty cool. <laughs> um, I love that you you have your keyboard set out like a guitar in the sense that it's angled so yeah is that well that was that was that that was my old trick i've i've moved on i have right. to i have to put the, the tricks to bed is it straight now you've gone straight again it's 90 degrees oh my god yeah oh, i'm not coming headlines that's why i came tonight the keyboard is straight the keyboard, the keyboard is well i created like a new platform actually uh like i put a keyboard inside of uh just a wooden wooden case that sort of looks like a bigger keyboard mm. now. but it it just provides like a space to put my a plinth my doodads on yeah, top yeah. of it so it's all right there it's just a way of having space but to, you can also hide stuff. it from the audience as well which maybe creates an extra layer of mystery if they can't can they see over the they can actually see what you yeah, it's true yeah you probably can't see yeah i mean i you know i liked doing that thing with the, the sideways keyboards but the, you know that was sort of like 
Did you find, was that literally because it, like, it helped you play? I'm, I, in a lot of ways, you could reduce my life to just explain it as a sequence of novelties. And I'm, I'm, that was just like, you know, a couple of years ago, that was the novelty. And I'm just looking, looking for a new, a new thrill. That's yeah. basically just writing music is just amusing yourself with the novelty of a sound you've just yeah. made or a yeah. melody. Right. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I painted my the, the keyboard case that I'm using on stage now gold, shiny gold. Nice. I thought that would be a cool novelty, That's... but it doesn't really come across. It's like, whatever. Not... It just looks like it's just yellow or something. You need to get some like sparkly. I, I did, and I got sparkly paint, but it for some reason melted the gold color <laughs> and it washed it away. I didn't even, <laughs> chemically, I didn't understand what's happening. Oh, I, wow. I just took it off and I put the gold back uh, on. That's a shame. It's a work in progress. Mm. It's a work in progress. We'll see where it goes. So do you, you, do you actually use backing tracks to some degree? Or have you got, how do you fly in vocals and things like that? In the line? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a, it's a, you know, it's a, the, the singer's not really there. No, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. But so, yeah. So, but yeah. You've done it before you had like, did you have videos on stage where you could actually sing? Yeah. Sing? Yeah. 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 So that's cool. I, don't, I guess you're not doing that now, but. No, we're not doing that now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. We, we have some ideas. The, the, the uh, yeah. I mean, that's another thing stage shows. Yeah. Or, you know, that whole business. Show. You know, because I, I, I mean, my, you know, they all say this, but but you know, I, I I'm more interested in the, the musician side or just the music, see the band, right? Like, you, who, like who, who needs right. smoke and mirrors? Who needs yeah. a laser? I, I really struggle with this because I'm like I'm so torn. I'm like I was saw Orteca play in Brighton and they play in pitch blackness. And yeah, it's just literally not one light on in the venue. Yeah, and it was just a, a musical like like landscape. You know, you are eyes closed just yeah travel i probably like in my mind walked like 25 miles 50 miles but there was not a single thing to look at right yeah i don't know and, that, you, and it's cool because it makes you focus on the music and, and well exactly it, it is a stage it, the stage show is an anti-stage show hmm. or something but yeah i mean it, so i i sort of prefer that but um so you've got no. I don't know, but then there's, but there's some cool ways to do some creative stuff that's not cheesy. Maybe I don't know. So do we're sort of you play music live or just have well, well, no, I'm just talking about the your stage stage bling. Yeah, yeah. Because you've lost the amps. That's like you kind of lose it. Yeah. Mm. Goodbye. We we have a lot of ideas. It's it's sort of actually about how do you how does it become a thing that you can pack up stick in yeah, yeah. your vehicle, whatever it is, yeah. and get it to the next gig and then open it up and set it yeah, up again. It work. And, you know, and, and not need like 10 people to mm. go do that every day. Mm. Cause, you know, yeah. I saw like DJ Shadow playing where you had like a whole rear projection system where you're playing inside a ball and like the ball split apart and the ball became like a basketball dancing on the thing. It was like, I was like, this is absolutely incredible, but this clearly like the only way this is possible is that there is just one musician to pay and there's now 25 people to pay. Yeah, to yeah. Make that work and design it and conceive yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I don't know how I you know. would do that. And, and I kind of wonder, you know, because, you know, Times Square in New York City and the, there are these places around the world. Like um, Times Square at this point is just like 300 giant iPhones like <laughs> sh shouting at you, yeah. right? And, and we all, you know, with computer screens and iPhones and you we're so bombarded with like the screen mm. that it's not novel anymore it's, you're just like just okay yeah like okay with the screen so i don't know i i almost feel like i don't know like I have nothing screens screens are over like ultimately it's about the music like you can invent music in front of an audience but to the audience it just looks like you're doing the same thing as if you just have everything pre-prepared. Yeah. If everything is pre-prepared, you're almost certainly going to have musically a more satisfying, potentially, show. It's right. like it, circling back to this idea of like, is and having the element of risk, what makes a show good or not? Like, what were your favorite shows? Like, there must have been somewhere you just right. like stuck in your craw. Yeah. Well, that's like a, this is like a more basic human thing. I mean, I, I remember like noticing like, like at that teenage sort of slightly later adolescent thing when you'd see your friend's band play 
and they could barely play their instruments. <laughs> and you and we're talking like I'm just playing four notes on a bass guitar kind of thing. And they would get through the song without messing up. It would be so exciting. You know, like, oh my gosh. And you can always just feel this human there's like a thing like the human a human being barely be being barely able to do the thing that they do and then they do it and they pull it off and it's like wow. Mm. It's just exciting. So maybe it's the same thing. I mean, like, you know, the wildness of pulling off an electronic set that's not pre-programmed mm. is, is tricky. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm not good enough on, on like, that pure electronic stuff to to, to pull off. I mean, I, I pre-program a lot of, I mean, the patterns and the MIDI notes, they're all in there. I mean, mm. like, it, you know, you can't humanly do it. Mm. And do you, um, yeah, do you need to? We couldn't. You've got too many parts. Yeah. Would it actually matter? Would an audience actually enjoy it more if they? Well, they wouldn't. They would. And also, people like, wouldn't like like like, like it, thing. and they would leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw my daughter did a, a dance performance. Um, she was four, or no, she was three at the time. I think three or four. I think she three. And she bowed. They took a bow at the end of the performance. And I, 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 I thought about it. I was like, she's never bowed before. Like, like I never taught her how to bow. Like a three year old. Like, does she even know what a bow is? And she bowed. And then, like the rest of the dancers, like left the stage because it was like song over. And she just stayed down in the bow. She, stay she stayed in the bow position. Like nobody taught her to stand back it's up. Unbow. <laughs> yeah, she, she was like stayed down in the bow position oh, for like bless. a minute. It was like someone would be like, okay, now you leave. Get off the stage. <laughs> Mm, sweet. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, you you sort of did it. It's exciting. I was going to pick your brains about pedals and stuff, which is the a word that I don't actually know that much about, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, I listen to the records and I'm I, the thing that like literally jumps out is like octave shifted guitar. I'm like, that feels like it couldn't be a battles record if there isn't an octave shifted guitar in it. I don't know. It's yeah, like yeah, that yeah. I, I really like that sound. I was thinking about it just like, does that what it almost sounds like this sounds fucking stupid, but in a weird way, it's like kind of almost that calypso sort of like um oh, steel yeah. drum sound that like when yeah. it tears and stretches when it's like high up and it's got this kind of weird zing. Yeah, it kind yeah. of has like the that probably it's some octave down and octave up at it's the about. same. You know, you, you, yeah, bend it both ways. Right? Um, is that that? Like, and the cool thing is, they, it just takes thing. the sound of like, yes, a guitar. You know, but then you know, it's, it it sort of makes it weird. It's sort yeah, of like, it still retains its musical value. Like mm. You can play the notes or the sometimes a chord, but sometimes chords sound weird. But yeah, it's like there was a moment where. I it's like listening back to it and there was an identifiable guitar. I was like, that seems unusual in a sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, not in a bad way. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, but I have other friends who are just like, I love playing the guitar, but I hate the sound. I hate like guitar. Do yeah. I mean, like, it's like, yeah. they, it yeah. must, it should not sound like it. And I don't know if that's because I assume just because of all of the trappings of the sort of guitar, like yeah. um, cork sniffering sort of. It's just the sort of legacy of music. It's like things of the past. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Like, yeah, it's just an observation. Yeah, it's, it's just like, weighted. It's weighted weighted down with decades of things that were once probably pretty radical and cool mm. that became you know bad cliches. But you still like gravitate to that instrument and still want to play it and still. It still is really yeah. I I like the visceral aspect of like a string vibrating. Yeah, a string vibrates. Exactly. You know, it's like you know in a world of of these boxes that make synthetic music for all of its benefits that we like. It's, you know, it's like nice that there's this, still the string is like the most visceral thing, you know, the vibration. So there's a question, which is something I've asked lots of people about, but um, if you could like wave a magic wand, what direction do you want to see production tools going in? Yeah, something that can just like a process of where you could have live input, sort of so, so, somehow that you could touch music more. You know, like like I said, like playing that guitar string or something, mm. or like a drum set. You know, that visceral physical aspect of it, which is I guess is really kind of like the human, like that's where the human interfaces with it. But then, like letting 
if, if you think of like the pressure points, like that yeah. make noise pressure points, like mm-hmm. those, those finger pad, it's these metal rows, you know, some of your listeners will mm. be familiar, but you know, like that thing's really visceral. It's like a really physical thing when you, when you hit those, pa- those, whatever plates. they, whatever they even call those things. Touch right? plates. I touch plates. Yeah, yeah. Touch plates. Yeah. Right. And that's pretty awesome. So how much of your finger squidged on it and it creates yeah. a jiggly, or like quivering yeah. voltage. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, things like that, and then, um, I mean, the thing that we've always—I think the heart of like our our aspect is like you put the initial voice in there, with, you know, whether whatever instrument that voice is, and you manipulate it and almost sort of like real time remix it, it and, and I guess like in, in a in a really easy way, that's sort of like a summary of what we've we've always done, just sort of like. You throw in the actual sound, and you you know you chop it up rhythmically and, mm. and make it dance around, and it was, so like the sound gets beyond like the original string you pluck, you know, keyboard note you play, and it it sort of skitters out into these different places depending on your devices. I don't know. It, it seems like yeah, there's there's de- there's definitely a lot of growth like technologically, like where that that can lead to where that can go. Yeah, mate. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Battles, and thank you, John Stainer, for allowing me to steal Ian for 33 minutes in order to talk to him. Yeah. Lot to talk about, I mean, and I feel like we've only scratched the surface. I like the fact that battles remain a mystery and there's only so much that you can really talk about when it comes to talking about music, the complexity of music in many regards. It's that idea of talking to someone and feeling like, oh my God, I just, you like hinted at so many things, but also it's that David Lynchy thing of not explaining how the magic trick is done. It's a lot more interesting when you don't know how. And having a sense of mystery, it's something that that people like myself that try and quantify and explain things. I mean, I'm explaining pieces of equipment, but to try and sort of explain, you know, well, this is how my show is done. Well, this is how I make this track. You know, this is how it's done. It kind of, I don't know. It's nice when you can have those kinds of conversations and learn some things, but not fully explain it. And I think if you listen to Battle's music... I think it's also fair to say that their songs do not require explanation and do not benefit from attempting to explain. They are supposed to be, like all good electronic music, something that expresses the inexpressible, (laughs) without sounding too pretentious. Um, But I hope you know what I mean. Electronic music at its absolute best touches on emotions that don't have names. Anyway... That's all. I want to thank our sponsors. That would be Signal Sounds. I encourage you all to go and buy Juice Be Crypts. Juice Be Crypts. Juicy Be Crypties. Get that album bought. It's fucking nuts. Um, and their other albums are all fucking nuts. No one else can make them. Only they can make those albums. And that isn't something you can say about everything in this year of our Lord. 2020? Very soon. Good God. Jesus Christ. Anyway, mainly, thanks for listening to this dang podcast. I've got more up my sleeve. I'm going to give you another one soon. Watch the space campers. I'll see you soon.